Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This is 100% the outdoors. And today, I'm going ice fishing. Winter just came, like that. Like, it went literally from positive temps to minus 20 overnight. It just, like, all of a sudden, winter's like, boom, we're here. I have been watching the ice. I have checked it. Carter and I did come out a few days ago. We caught nothing but I was more so just checking on the ice just to make sure everything was good. And today I should be good to go. It doesn't mean I'm not gonna spud my way out just to make sure that something hasn't changed, right? Like you always have to be cautious at first ice. Please, like I stressed in my, my, my previous ice fishing video from this year, the actual this year is safety. I'm not gonna talk anything more about that, but just safety, safety, safety. Please be, please be safe. Anyways, sputter way out. Get my ice picks on yet here. Spud bar, let's do it. Let's go catch some walleye. It's really funny. Last night I had to convince myself to take this side of sled, this size of sled. I almost took one one size smaller. I'm like, yeah, I should be able to get my shelter and everything in there because it's colder today. I have to be in a shelter with the heater and stuff. It's it's cold. And I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, maybe I'll take one. Yeah, I was like, no, I'll take the big one. I realistically could have took the biggest one yet. <laughs> Oh boy, and it's easy to pull when the ice is like this and there's no snow on top, so I got a lot of gear, but a lot of it's camera gear, of course. Cleats are a must right now, no doubt about it. And somebody to pull my sled would be quite nice too. We'll just take our time, get out to where we need to be, get set up, and enjoy the day. So Carter and I fished the other day here. Let's see how much ice was made. Yeah, look at that. We fished two days ago, our old holes. Like, it's even hard to get through our old holes. Yeah, lots of ice. So when I can tell that there's good ice, I can see all these cracks. I'm not spudding as often. I'm just checking weaker spots. Like right here, this is where we fished, but it looks different, right? So when I get up to it, I'm gonna check it. And there's lots, but it looks different because that's the water that was on top of the ice when we were fishing before that froze. So that's why it looks different. This is where Carter and I got to the other day and we chipped out a piece and we could really see the inconsistency with the ice. So yes, we had three inches of ice in one area, but we had like an inch to two inches in another. It was very inconsistent. So we pulled the plug and turned around and went back and fished closer to shore. This is where I'll really start being careful on my way out now. No way, Clayton. <sighs> okay, we'll make do. Okay, we did it, buddy. Way to not give up and go home. I'll explain this whole situation right away but I forgot something kind of important because I was had my shack set up in the garage yesterday so well I'll explain it right now I'm like okay what do I do it's windy today I have to peg the shelter some down somehow forgot my pegs yesterday or today because I set up my shelter in the garage last night just make everything was good to go because the first time I used it everything was great and I didn't put the pegs back in the in the bag 
So I use my spud bar here, spud it a hole. This is not gonna move, that's solid. At the end of the day, I might have to drill around it to get it out. It could freeze a little bit, that's fine. Over here, drill two holes, shallow ice, so that we'll get the rope underneath, grab it with my hand, tie it up. Now at least this shelter isn't gonna go anywhere today, no matter what, it's, it's fine, it's perfect. So we avoided not just giving up and going home today. Well, we are officially set up. Got the live scope going with the LVS 34. I've got the AquaView going, it's HD 7i Pro. Two holes, absolutely dialed, pumped. I know people are gonna ask how much ice there is so let's see here oh geez there's quite a bit of ice here there's there's six inches like it doesn't look like much but it's six inches of ice you can literally drive an atv out here already there is a pile of ice it's crazy when it gets cold how fast it can make ice there's lots of ice not a question being quiet today is going to be a necessity. I'm only in 12 feet of water. I can actually see the bottom. I don't know if it'll show up on the awk or on the underwater camera, not the underwater camera, the head camera, but uh, I could almost sight fish for these things. Be close, be a little bit too deep yet, but crazy. Like this is money. I'm stoked. I'm here for the long haul. I'm here until I either nail down a video and can hopefully start another video for the night bite or i'm here until the end until right till the night and maybe it'll take me through the whole day and into the evening i'm not sure i'm expecting a powerhouse evening bite i'm not expecting a crazy midday bite it is like already 11 o'clock are you kidding me i got to the lake at like 9 15 an hour and 45 minutes before I finally dropped the hook. That's after getting to the lake. Like I left my house at like seven o'clock, right? Like four hours it took me until I'm set up and filming. So everybody thinks that my, all my fishing is like literally right out my back door. It's not the case. I do a lot of traveling. Lots of times I'll travel the night before, sleep in my truck, get up early, get set up, etc. But we're fishing, I'm happy, I'm pumped. We made, we, we figured out our situation. I brought a drill to pop in spikes for the tent and uh, guess what? No spikes. We made her happen though. Nothing to it. Let's do it. And right now I'm going with a one, two punch with a rattle bait and a hyper glide here. I might switch to a jig and a minnow at some point as well. But right now this is what we're going to start with. And we'll, uh, we'll see from there. If it was warmer outside, I'd put, I brought a, a finicky fooler. I'd throw a tip up out and just fish one hole in the shelter. But it's cold outside. And I don't want to be going back and forth. So we're going to just fish right here in the shack today. Ice is making crazy noise because it's making ice right now. Oh, what is that? A water beetle? That looks like bait to me. What is that? It's like a cockroach, it looks like, but it can't be a cockroach because it's like a water beetle. Betcha I can use that for bait. Ah, don't go down a hole. I might just keep that puppy alive for a little bit and then, I don't know, can you use water beetles for bait? I think a fish would crush that, wouldn't it? It's like a fish would hammer that. Well, I'm gonna let it go this time. But this happens again where a, where a water beetle comes up a hole. Do fish eat water beetles? Let me know in the comments. See you, little buddy. Watch this, just fish comes by, oh, nails it. Get asked a lot of times, like, what is that? What are the little things swimming underneath on the, on the underwater camera? Water beetles. Lots of times they're water beetles. I wonder if fish get, do you guys think fish get freaked out of the sound of ice being made? I'm trying to think now of like if I've ever had any like really amazing days of fishing where the, like the ice is just making consistent sounds popping, you know, that all day. I wonder if that spooks fish. I'm trying to think if I've ever had like any amazing days 
when the ice is making so many noises. I've obviously caught fish when the, my, other than the ice is making noises. I'm trying to think if I had like smoke show days. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Something I have to pay attention to though. Comes a fish. Here we go. Come on. Get over here. There it is. Oh yeah, that's a walleye. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh boy, it just went right by that. Oh, is it coming back? No, it's going to the rattle beat. I gotta be quiet. Oh, come on, get out of that rod holder. Oh, come on. Oh, donkey Clayton. You donkey. Oh, he was focused in. I think I'm gonna drop a dead stick down. Instead, hmm, bad maneuver. Donkey play, Clayton. Should have just left it. It's coming in so slow. It went by my first bait. Went over to the rattle bait. I feel like it wasn't going to eat it anyway. But I think I'm going to hang a dead stick there with a minnow instead. A dead minnow. Yeah, we'll try that, I think. Oh, midday update. Falling asleep, 3.30. I have now fished for four and a half hours. I've seen one walleye. We're going to hold on till dark, though. We are going home with some fish today. But I might need a little nap here. Oh, I was listening to some podcasts and uh, definitely uh, dozed off for a tiny bit here, like for a few minutes. But I might just shut my eyes and wait till a fish comes by and grabs my bait. Oh, no, that was my bait. That was my hook on the live imaging. I'm too, too excited for this. Too excited for this. Oh, 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 what's this? Oh, a pike. Do I really want to catch you? <laughs> it's not a small pike either. First fish I've seen in a while. Even he's scared. Hmm. Sadly, that's the second fish I've seen on the camera all day and even he was like not that interested at all in anything just like the fish aren't really moving that much sadly i'm probably about also 15 minutes away from losing light on the underwater camera i have sat here patiently waiting 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 just not happening yet it's all good it's all good i am losing my light on the underwater camera. I think I'm gonna pull it up. Just in case I do happen to get a night bite here. I'm not dealing with that when the fish start to come around. Cause I did just see two more fish on the live imaging about 40 feet out, so. Fish, come on. Yeah! Fish! We waited for five hours, I think, at least, or more. But we just got a walleye. Maybe we'll get a little bit of a night bite. Hey, I'll take what I can get, right? It's only the second walleye I've seen all day. I went to a rattle bait just to try to draw them in something because it's just not happening for us at all. I'm losing my light, but I think I got some good lights in the shelter here. I should be, should be okay yet, but this one's going in the bucket. So it's 4.30. It took five and a half hours to catch my first fish of the day. And the sad thing is, is that the day is getting to be over. I've honestly had so much I've wanted to talk about for this like video. I wanted to like catch a fish, talk about something. For example, like right now I'm using a little heat hog instead of a bigger one because it's early season. And I thought, well, lighten the load a little bit. So I got a new heat hog last year. I just hadn't had a chance to use this yet. I used the bigger one, which lots of people asked about in some videos and seemed to be really good. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to open the, the little one and take it out for early ice. So far I'm on my second propane bottle. I refilled a bunch of small, actually I had a friend refill a bunch of small uh, propanes for me for early season two, instead of like hauling out a bigger one. So I just brought three one pound propane tanks with me today and I'm on my second one and like only probably halfway into it at the most. So I'm impressed. I kept the heater pretty much on medium the whole time, or I guess low. Maybe there's like a, a low and a high. There's only really two settings for this one, but it's perfect for early season when it's not too cold yet. 
a little bit smaller shelter. I didn't need much. This is the Eskimo uh, Outbreak 450. It's relatively around that same size. I think it's a one square foot bigger, two square foot bigger from the shelter I was running last year, which was the Otter Lodge. This one as well, full door. I Once I've started fishing with a full door, I'll never go to anything without the full door. It just makes my life so much easier. But anyways, hope we can catch a few more fish so we can talk about some more, I don't know, just talk about some cool things. New gear for the year. All that fun stuff, you know? Like, it's really hard to make a video when you're not catching fish. I have a video that I put together a shelter in the garage and I haven't even started editing yet because I'm just like, it feels like it's so painful to put a video out where I'm not actually like fishing at the same time or doing something. I guess I technically am doing something and put together a shelter, but fingers crossed. We ice some more walleyes. Hopefully a couple more to take home for fish tacos. And uh, yeah, life's good. I'm happy to be out here regardless. A lot of work for one walleye though. Five and a half hours. Oh boy. 22 feet away. I'm seeing lots of fish behind me, like 30 to 50 feet. I should have got closer to the deeper water, I think, for, a, for my setup. I think I made a mistake. I didn't get close enough today. I thought they'd be up on the flat early season. That's the nice thing with live imaging is you can learn, like, where the fish are, right? Like, now it could totally change. Next time I go out... They could be on the flat right like that's the one thing that's you when you're fishing inside you're so confined to one area but i'm not going to fish outside when it's cold out and harm the fish that's obviously fish safety is most important oh 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 those fish are smaller those fish are tiny Little walleye or a little perch? Oh, something just didn't eat my little walleye. Something, or the little, another little guy's on my dead stick at the same time. <laughs> I got a double. I got a doubler. But I got to get this little guy off first. Okay, see ya. All of a sudden, there's fish everywhere. Like, but they're a school, a school of little guys. Like tiny. Tiny guys. There's a little bit better one behind it, though. We'll get rid of this little guy here. Yeah, just like that. Boom, boom, boom. Whole pot of little guys just cruised in there. The dead stick is nice. And we'll talk about it eventually, but I got a rod holder here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> little guy just hit me as I was getting the dead stick back in. These are tiny guys. Whew. But all of a sudden, the, the water column came alive. So I think I was trying to say here that I got a dead stick going on here too on this rod holder which is new from Eskimo this year too for accessories in the hub. Kind of neat. I'll do more with that eventually but right now I need to get everything down there because there's some fish happening finally today. Not big but hopefully some bigger ones will come by. There's another tiny tiny guy down there right now on my rattle bait. Little guy ate my minnow. You dirty rat. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Look at this. It doesn't even bend the rod. Clayton, you catch the big ones. That is tiny. Tiny. I think this is like 27, 28 inches, something like that. I won't measure. Usually, I'm pretty good at guessing. <laughs> oh, boy. Little, little, little guys. Oh, what's there? What's there? A couple small guys, or is there a better one there? It's a little bit better. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Maybe you want a spoon? My dead stick's not down right now, so I can drop a spoon down too. Maybe it wants a spoon instead.
Come on, turn towards the spoon. Oh, it's still coming towards the rattle bait. Nice, okay. It ate it dead sticked. Like I said, it's not big, but it might be an eater though. Oh yeah. We're on them now. We're on them. Well, we waited all day, but we finally are catching a couple walleyes, a perfect eater. Camera batteries changed. I've got fish coming at me like crazy here. They're all smaller. Prime time is on. <laughs> I talk about this so much, like not in the last like little while, but like when I first started making videos, I talked about the prime time like all the time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Wow. Giant perch. Giant perch, which is kind of funny because in my experience, usually perch, once the sun sets, they seem to shut off, it seems like. I'm not going to measure. It's probably like a 12 inch or I'll just show them off quick because I've got fish happening down there like crazy and he's squirmy. Easy. I'll just show them off quick. Just a fat jumbo. Maybe 13. Nah, I'd say 12. Doesn't really matter. I know it's not a like a PB or anything like that, so we'll let them go. A lot of people are going to say, why aren't you keeping that to eat? I like letting the big perch go because I'd love to catch like a 14-inch perch one day. And the only way to do that is to let a 12, 13-incher go. So not really doesn't bother me at all. Anyway, I was talking about prime time. Prime time sometimes is like the only time of day those walleyes will bite. Yes, I've had days where I get them to eat all day long, but I've also had times where it's like they'll only come out in that last hour of the day. And of course, every lake is different as well, but crazy. I took my dead stick out right now and now I'm just double fisting, rattle bait in one hand, spoon in the other. This is a frosty clownfish from uh, Frostbite. It's the, the rattle bait's called the Tantrum. And on this side here, I've got the Acme Ice Winder, the quarter, the quarter ounce, I believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's quarter ounce. Ice is making crazy noise. I need these fish to vanish and a bigger one to come in. Got two in the bucket though. That's all I'm about today. We're filling the bucket. Well, that one's a little bit better there. Oh, little guy just spooked him right away though. Thanks, little guy. Still can't believe it took five and a half hours to catch a fish today. Early ice, they're so like unpredictable where they could be. There's like, obviously like every year I think, oh yeah, I smoked him here. Like, you know, early ice last year or one year. And it's like, no matter what, it always feels like I, oh, 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 that whole ice just shifted. I would say that every year, it seems like I have to recon and figure out where they are for that first ice, right? It never fails. It's been a while since I've gone out like first day. A couple years ago, Carter and I went out and I caught a 30 incher the first day. We only caught like five or six fish that day though. So obviously we got a little bit lucky with catching a big one, but it seems like it always ha it takes a few trips to like get on them and figure them out. Like what's going on It changes every year that's why someone's like well like where do you fish or what kind of what do you fish or what do you look for and it's like it changes so much every year it's always different for some reason these fish have fins and they can swim around and they're not always in the same spot time after time come on come on like said in the dirt it came back again third time but it wants it down low Oh, I spooked them. That was another eater. Another eater. It's getting, oh, here we go. Fourth time. Come on. Come on. Still not that big, but I'm sure he's an eater anyway. Oh, he bumped it. He bumped it. He's going to eat again, though, isn't he? He's going to eat again. 
he's that interested in it. He's going to eat again. He's got that bottom all stirred up. There we go. <laughs> I got you. I got you. You're another eater. Let's pitch black right now. And I'm still catching some fish. That one isn't very big, though. We'll see here if it's under 18 inches to keep. And yeah, it's like 17. So it is another eater right there. That fish came on the Acme Ice Winder. This is the pink wonder bread, I think. Something like that. Pink glow wonder bread, I believe. And I'm tipping it with an eyeball from one of the fish that I've already caught, which is legal where I am here. Normally I don't fish flutter spoons with bait, but this spoon is more like a hybrid. It's classified as a flutter spoon, but it's not like a way, way out to the side. It's kind of like a hybrid, kind of like the dinner bell from Frostbite that I fish a lot too, where it's like, it's not, it doesn't like go crazy out to the side, which I like a lot. And that one, that fish, up high, it went by, checked out the rattle bait, no, checked out the spoon up high, and all of a sudden I noticed down in the dirt, it was like engaging, and I did miss it once. Well, maybe it just missed the spoon too, but it caused up a bunch of commotion. It turned around and came back, and it ate. We are officially catching fish at first ice. I just took some patience of sitting here for five and a half hours for it to happen. And don't get me wrong, this is not a Clayton Schick barn burner day at all. This is uh, nothing impressive. I could I could catch a lot of these little guys though right now if I just dropped a, a smaller bait down, I'd, I'd probably catch 30 of them. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pitch black. I think I'm gonna pack things up right away just with it being early ice and Obviously I have to be careful. I do have a, a light and stuff to walk back to the truck too, but you gotta be careful, right? Like the ice shifts lots at first ice. Um, the rods I was using today was primarily the Smoke Show, which is a, a 37 medium light, and the True Grit, which is a 38 medium, and then a little bit of the Drench, which is a 39 light. Actually, no, sorry, that's the Digger. That's the 39 medium. That's not the medium light. The drench is the medium light, but I was using the digger today, which is a 39 inch medium. I'm gonna use that one for a dead stick rod and also a rattle bait rod at some point. And yeah, all, all the rods made by Frostbite, Frostbite Reels, which is the Diesel uh, 1000. They seem to make a pretty good, inside a set of fish, just little fish clip me. They made to, seem to make an improvement on the reels this year. They are now a felt drag and not a carbon drag so that's one thing that they switched but still the same thing with like the the grease that's better for cold weather and whatnot but anyways i've still got fish down there they seem to be small i think we're gonna wrap it up here not it's not a crazy good video but it's just a day on the ice they're not all gonna be smoking barrels there's lots of these little guys hanging around right now but if you could take anything away from today's video be versatile, don't just give up. Hence the, I'm talking about the anchors and the ice. I switched, or I, did, I forgot my anchors, so I, I found a way, right? I improvised and I just didn't give up. I toughed it out till prime time hours. Caught some fish to take home so I can cook up some catch and cook fish tacos. I'm just happy, I'm happy to be back on the ice. We are gonna crush some giant walleyes this year. Like, brain it on, we're going for I think I'm going to go for my third year with a 13 plus pounder. That's the goal. Put another teener on the ice. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget, get outside.